Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a SharePoint document library for Dataverse for Teams apps. So before we even get started, why are we even trying to do this? As you can see from this screenshot over here, um, Dataverse for Teams environment only gives you 2 GB of storage per environment. And from that 2 GB, one fourth of it is occupied by uh, the backend stuff itself. So to set up that environment, it needs that amount of um, storage that is 512 MB. So technically you only get 1.5 gigs of data. Now, if you're trying to build apps which have a lot of files, images that you need to store along with it, you'll soon run out of storage and um, <laughs> basically you won't be able to save more records of data. So what we'll do is we'll try to create or we will create a table just to store images, uh, but these will not store the image file, but it will store a reference to the image, which is in SharePoint document library. So that way we can show the image and the image related data in your app, but technically it will be taking that from a SharePoint document library. So a lot of talk. Let's first look at a demo of how we are doing this and then we build it from scratch. So yeah, let's look at a demo of the app. Let's add a record. I'm gonna add another image for Nashville here. So I'll just call it Nashville 2. We we'll call it country United States. We'll add a picture. I pick up this high res image and we'll say add this. So it runs behind. So you see the image was added. If I click on it, the image shows up. If I go to these other records, the other images show up and that that's it for the demo. But let's look at what is happening on the back end. So if I look at places, this is my table. I click on edit data. And if you see here, I initially started with this like a photo column, but then instead of using that, I'm using an image column, which is not storing the image, but it's a lookup to this record um, in the images table. So let's look at the images table quickly. So if I go to images, edit data. So all these records have been kind of working on. So you see here it has the file identifier. So this is so that we can refer to that file in the SharePoint site. This is the link to the item. So it has uh, the exact link. So if I want to open that, so let's say if I open this, it will open that file. And also it has the thumbnail URL. So the thumbnail URL is something that I'm using in the app so that I'm not using a lot of data to load the image. So this is the small resolution or the low resolution. And then I have a higher res URL as well. So, so this is for the higher res thumbnail. So basically I'm not storing the image itself, but I'm storing uh, a reference to that image, which is in the SharePoint document library. Let's open up the SharePoint document library as well quickly here. So this is my SharePoint document library. It has these files that I just added. And then these are the files that are referenced back in here. Right? So that's uh, how I've set up this app. Now let's try to build it ourselves here in this video so that you can see how to build it yourself. So the first thing we want to connect to the places table. So it's automatically changing things over here. Um, and then let's quickly look at the table itself just so that I can show you how to add this. So to add this, I mean, I'll actually click on edit column so you can see what type of column it is. So you are adding a lookup column 
which is looking up to this image table and it's uh, kind of related so one place could be is related I mean it's it's connected to this image file here or the image record in the image table that was a mouthful uh, so let's go back and let's add the images table as well and let's look at that data again just a few things here so file identifier um, is something that I told you is getting it from the um, in file identifier on the SharePoint uh, file and these are linked to items and I'll show you there is a flow that basically does this so we'll get to that in a minute here but one thing to keep in mind is for the thumbnail URLs it's a URL type of column but at the same time the length it goes up to more than 1000 so I've kept it at 3000 but again um, this is not going to occupy a lot of space it's not going to take much data but yeah you can store this thumbnail the low res and there's a high res URL as well so just make sure that you have the um, max length set to something in the 2000 or 3000 3000 is just a safer number so let's two columns i've added tags and extracted text this is something that you could get from sharepoint files um, i'll show you how to do that but this is just an add-on benefit of storing files in the sharepoint document library so let's look at this form i'm gonna click on it it feels i don't want these photo the, the photo column itself uh, we'll remove this category and here we add image as a lookup okay so now if i click on preview this says it's connected to the seattle.jpg and if I do a new record, it's not gonna give me that option to add an image, which I showed you earlier. So you're like, oh, how do I give that option? This is just giving me option to select existing images, but that's not something that I wanna do. So let's go back, actually, let's click on new record so that we have this with us. And then we will select this click on advanced and we'll unlock so that we can make some more changes um, we'll actually make this half oh doesn't like it let's yeah this is fine and then let's increase the height a bit and we we need to add that add media control right so um, I'll click on plus sign here, search for add picture, add that. Let's see if it added correctly. So yeah, it's because we unlocked it, it allows us to add controls. And then this is get inside that image data card. Let's make it a bit smaller. Now we don't want this, so we'll just hide it. And then here, let's move, oh, not the whole thing. So we click on this whole control and then move it a little bit. And let's change the font size for this to 15 maybe. Yeah, that's a better size. So this will allow us to add a picture, but then it's not gonna connect it to, um, to the place record so we'll have to add this image first to a sharepoint document library and then we'll have to connect the place record and the image record so how do we do that so on this first we want to save the file names so we'll say set file name to this add media with image one, add media with image, or add media button one dot file name. 
So that actually, if you pick it up from um, uh, an existing folder in your device, it picks up the file names. And then we want to set the content, which will be set file content to and we are going to use the JSON function here so that we can get the the, the base64 binary uh, data. And if you're not aware about this, um, I, I actually looked at a video from Shane Young, a good friend of mine, where he has a whole video of how you can add files from Power Apps to SharePoint document library. Um, and you can look at that and how he does the whole thing, but I'm going to use it right, right away. And if you want to look at that video, I'll put it in the description below. So we look, we take the uploaded image one dot image and we will say include binary data. So let's get that binary data and then we have to complete a set here okay now SharePoint needs the f um, there's a difference of how I say this um, SharePoint only needs the the content the binary I mean <laughs> uh, the base 64 data only Whereas the JSON file has like initial data colon image slash JPEG or SVG, something like that. And then it, um, and then the, the content itself. So I know even I don't understand what exactly <laughs> is all that, but uh, I'll show you how to get the base 64 only stuff. And we'll, we'll see how, what the difference there is as well. So. Like, why am I even doing all this base 64? What does that even mean, right? Um, so I'm gonna copy the formula from my app because I don't wanna spend time in doing that whole formula. So let me just do a new record, click on this and look at the formula behind here. So we take this whole thing Go back to our app here, paste it. Uh, okay, so let's do a format text. And what we'll do is I'll show you what these two different things are. So we'll add two labels, insert label, ah, not in there. You wanna add it here somewhere so that we can maximize it not edit form label let's add that we we'll call this file content and then we'll add another label which we'll call the base 64 only and what i'll do is i will click on tap add a picture open and we we'll just click on this this is not going to submit a record but it will do this. So if you see here, uh, come on, let me access that. I think it, because it's a huge chunk of data, it just freezes the app. Wait. Okay, while the app is frozen, let's just look at why this is ha uh, why we did that. So here, if you see, it says data colon image, blah, 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 comma, and then it started the 9J thing. And this one is just that um, we don't, we strip off that data colon image and just want to send this because we'll use this to convert it to binary and then create the file. All right, we are back now. <laughs> uh, because it was a huge file, um, it just crashed my teams. So I'm just gonna use the same app that I already created. We are already kind of halfway through it, so we'll keep using this app now instead of creating that new app. 
But we, I mean, I'll still cover the whole thing. So let's look at what I did here. So there is this file name, file content, base64 only data. And this formula basically helped me in getting that uh, string that starts after the comma, after that whole data colon image slash PNG or S, whatever that is. Um, again, as I told you, um, Shane has a really good video on this. If you want to look at it, check out the description. So once I have the base64 only data, I'm going to I'm going to set the image to it and I'll show you why I'm doing this. Um, the first thing I'm doing is submitting the form so that all the, like the name goes through and then I'm running this flow, which is upload file to SP and I have these, uh, file name and the base 64 only data. So let's look at the flow behind this magic. Let's click on Power Automate um, and click on Edit. So there are two things that I got from the uh, from Power Apps. So the first thing is the file name and the file content, as I mentioned earlier, you are converted to binary. So this is the expression. Let's just copy that uh, comment here so that if you need to use this. Um, so yeah, you're converting it to binary, the, the, the data that you're getting from Power Apps because that's how SharePoint wants the data. And then it creates the file. And now we have, we want to get the file properties so that we can populate the, the link to item and the, uh, the thumbnail URL because that's something that you don't get along with the create file action. So I'm doing get file properties using the item ID from this create file action. And then I'm adding a new row into images. So remember again, places is the table that we are trying to add a new row in. And we want to create an image record which stores the data or reference to the SharePoint document library. So we created the file in the SharePoint document library. Now we want to create a new row in the images table, which has links or references to that SharePoint file in this document library. By the way, I did create an app media library. You could create any kind of library, but make sure that you use that same uh, library in, in everywhere, in any, um, subsequent kind of flows or anything else that you want to use in the app for. So I'm um, adding a name for the file, uh, file and fire, just for the sake of it, I'm adding that. I don't know, I might need it in the future for something. And I'm adding a link to the item, I'm adding the thumbnail, higher as URL and the thumbnail URL so that I can use this in the app to show uh, a thumbnail of the file. And actually this works not just for images, but for any kind of file like PDF or anything like that as well. Um, and the next thing that I'm doing is I'm passing an image to it. Now good is nothing but a unique identifier, um, which will be created for every new row in a Dataverse for Teams table. And that's how an each row is identified. So I'm passing this unique identifier that I got from this action. I'm sending this back to the, the app so that I can connect the, the place record that I just created with this image record in the app. I could have done this in the flow. But then in the app, I would have had to do some refresh on the data source and a refresh of data source would refresh everything. But I, I just want to refresh one specific record. And that's why I'm making that connection of the place record and the image record in the app rather than the flow. So I'm passing back this image to it. So let's go back to the app. 
And if you see here behind this again, let's look at the action. So I have, I'm setting a variable image grid, which takes uh, the value from this image grid, which is passed from the flow. So any kind of uh, output that you add here can be seen here um, when you put a dot after the flow and uh, function. So now that we have the image grid, we want to use that to um, update the place record. So I'm doing a patch on places. Uh, now to get the lat that last record, I'm using edit form one, which is this form dot last submit. So whatever the last record that was submitted, it gets that. And then I'm updating the image uh, lookup. So I'm doing image colon. And then to get that specific image record, which has already been created by the flow here. So this record has been created. So I'm doing a lookup images where image, which is the good equals this image good that I got from this variable. Now, when I just did an image equals without the good function, it says, Oh, this doesn't match. So even though it is a good, it needs to know that it is exactly a good. So I'm doing a good function and then putting that variable in it. So this will connect the place record and the image record. And then we'll have those two connected. And let's run this again. I'm going to say Nashville three, we'll click this, maybe choose Nashville three. It, and then well, I can choose country or if I don't want to I can skip that as well. So you see it takes, it's running those dots over here. And as soon as this dot completed, it added the image. So that's the image that it's getting from the image table, not from the place table, right? Because those two are connected. So let's look at how this is, how are we getting this? So if you see here, this is connected to the places. So this gallery is places and this image is this item dot image, which is a lookup to the image table, um, dot thumbnail URL. So I'm getting that thumbnail, um, that is the, uh, the low resolution URL and I'm showing that over here. And this is actually getting from, so if we look at this, if you haven't added any file yet, it says uploaded from current item dot image. Current item is nothing but the selected item over here. Dot image dot thumbnail high res URL. And if you go to the images table, if I click on edit data, uh, you'll see we, I guess I don't have uh, created on, let's add that and go to create it on. We'll do a newer to older. So this was the latest one. It has this thumbnail URL, the thumbnail high res URL, uh, created on, link to item and everything. Let's quickly look at the flow as well. So the flow ran one minute ago. It, had, it created the file using uh, the file name and file content that was passed from the app gets the file properties adds a new row to the images table and then sends this image good back to power app so that we can connect the place and the image record so that's how you are able to save all the files um, connected to any, so you could basically use, instead of images, you could just call it files. Mm -hmm. And any table, let's say places, or cities, or states, countries, whatever, products, whatever you're using it for, 
just have a central look one table for files which is like a central um, location and then what you could do is you could add another identifier here um, I mean you don't, you don't even need to do that you can just connect products or places or countries, any kind of table, have a lookup to files and then um, have all your files connected to your uh, places or any kind of tables all stored in here. And I say stored the reference to the SharePoint document library. So all your files can have reference to the SharePoint document library over here uh, with all the links and your files actually are saved in SharePoint, not in Dataverse for Teams. So that way you'll not exceed that 1.5 gigs very soon. It will take you a lot of time because all these records don't occupy that much data or that much storage space, and you'll be able to save a lot more data. Um, actually, let's look at if we can add a file as well. So. Hopefully this works. I haven't tried this yet. Uh, for some reason it shows the previous image. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll just go to documents. Uh, let's see if I have a PDF. Okay. I do have a PDF. It doesn't allow me for some reason because it's an image control. Now I'm using a Mac here. I know there's an option to um, add an attachment control and you could connect to an attachment, but maybe that's for another video. So let me know if you like this video. If you want to see how to maybe have multiple images for one record, maybe I can create a video on that. Or if you want something else related to Dataverse for Teams or Power Apps or Power Automate, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make a video on that as well. So thank you for watching the video and um, see you next time.